Hello. I heard a doorbell. Hello. I don't hear you. Deactivated. Now I hear you. Yeah, now it's working. Okay. Hi. Hi. How are you? Um, okay, I'm in France. Who are you? I'm okay. I'm in uh I'm in the US. I'm in New York. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you have a you have a ver uh, your background I feel like is a better idea than mine. Well, I just moved apartments today, so I'm in my new apartment and it's empty. It's cardboard boxes and this couch. And I think this is perfect bed. because now yeah. we can only focus on you. Yeah. And but I have this isn't the behind you. Well, that's me. That's, nice. that's me behind me. Okay, but who I can is do you? I can do a number of these. Look, I can um there's the um Here's a good one. Wait, watch this. There's this option. <laughs> yeah, and then there's um, there's this option. And then this one's really good. This I is, feel like I'm in a John Malkovich movie. Yeah, this is my favorite right now. How do you do that? I, I have a twin. No, I um, I you re you record you record yourself, and you make a video, and then no, no, I just you record yourself doing that, and then you um you make it a little short video, and then you can go in Zoom and you can um, you can import the video to be your virtual background. Okay, so you've been doing a lot of Zoom lately, I guess. I'm a teacher, and I've been teaching all online. Yeah. So what do you teach? I teach dance at um oh i guess i'm doing the introduction first i see yeah we have to introduce ourselves yeah but now but you but you asked me so now it's perfect so i can do the introduction i am um oh my name is dan safer okay. and i uh i teach dance at mit at the uh massachusetts institute of technology which no one even knows has arts or anything they just think it's the like scientists and engineers, but but they do have a French department, and I have a friend who works there, so I oh, yeah? know that they have like human sciences and like oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll have to meet your friend if we ever go back to campus. <laughs> um, yeah, so I teach. I taught at NYU before that, but now I teach at MIT, and we've been online since March. So I've been doing okay. lots of Zoom dance classes, which feel like. Uh, do you know what? Um, do you know what tofurkey is? Tofurky. I don't think you. I don't yeah. think you do. No. Uh, it's it's a brand name. Tofurkey is the um, the fake turkey made of tofu. Okay. And it's terrible. And they okay. made it for vegetarians at Thanksgiving. And it's awful. And I feel like teaching dance on Zoom is no matter how good it is, it's still tofurkey. <laughs> So that's what I've been doing. Okay. And even if it's good, like even if you dress it up and make it taste really good, it's still at its heart, it's still tofurkey. So that's 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 me. And and I and I'm a and I'm I'm a choreographer, so I make shows also. But do right now teach, I just, um, do hmm? you teach uh, theory of dance or is it No, all practical. Like I practical teach, practical yeah, yeah. dance classes. I okay. teach choreography and and like practical like this is how to fall down on the ground and not get hurt. This is how to roll around. This is how to pick someone up on your shoulder and dive off them onto the floor. Like they're all practical. And the students, do they study to become dancers or do you teach dance to students who are in other? Um, they're all in other curriculum. fields. Some of them have maybe like 12 years of ballet when they come because MIT, they're all the smartest in the world. So some of them are like chemical engineers who also have been playing the violin their whole life and doing ballet and doing 10 other things. Um, but some have not, have no experience with it. Okay. So very few of them, I think will end up dancers, but they might still always dance. Like they might love it and do it, but they're probably, I had one student who is an amazing dancer and he's also a, a wrestler. And he said when he got out of school, he wanted to solve recycling. Okay. Like figure out how to make recycling actually work. So that's the kind of thing they're going to do as opposed to like me who was going, oh, I want to make shows. He's going, oh, I want to save the planet. So that's who you're, that's who you're dealing with. 
freelancers and engineers, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, Wendy? I can. I know uh, that because your name is written. I'm not done with my corner. questions. I want to know. Oh, okay. Oh, please. Sorry. <laughs> please keep asking I want, questions. I want to know if you're born in America. I was born in America. America. I was born in New Jersey. Um, I am. My grandparents came over from uh, Eastern Europe, so I'm. What does that make me? Third generation here. Okay. Yeah. Second. Second generation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've what lived. What are your European um, roots? Russian and Polish, okay. mostly. I did the. Um, I did that 23andMe uh, DNA testing thing where they can tell you your roots. And I was really excited about discovering things. And it said that I was like 98% Eastern European and 2% vaguely European. So it was really quite boring. It didn't tell me much at all. And it said I was mostly from this one area in Russia. Yeah, okay. I was hoping for something a little more exotic and. But surprising. wait, do you do you know the name of this area? Because I happen to have grandparents who grew up in Silesia, which is now Polish but used to be German. Let me. I write on the chat Silesia. In, I'm gonna uh, look up. in German, they call it Schlesien. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe uh, if we um... we have grandparents from the same like Dorf. Dorf is a village in German. We're probably. <laughs> We're probably related. I'm guessing that we're related. Is my okay? You're like my hidden cousin from like yeah, no longer, generation. no longer they hidden. All, they all left the village in 1945 when Poland took a part of Germany, and you ended up your genes, the genes that made you ended up in America, and mine ended up in France. Yeah, hang on, I'm I'm, I'm logging in to 23andMe to see if I can tell you where I'm from, because I forget. Ancestry and traits overview. Let's see, view report. I don't know what this. I'm 98.2% of my ancestry is Ashkenazi Jewish. Central and Eastern Europe in the late Middle Ages. It's not really telling me exactly where. Oh, yeah, okay. It doesn't do the. I thought it did. But geographical thing. Okay. I think it does. Oh, I have a little bit. Oh, this is. I have a little bit of Coptic, Egyptian, and a little bit of Anatolian, apparently. Um, I have 227 genetic variants that can be traced to Neanderthals. Interesting. So we could be. We could be related there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why That's your uh, like a... Do you know why your great grandparents? So it's your great grandparents, their generation. Do you know why they came to America? When when did it happen? Oh, uh, they came at the they came uh, at the turn of the last century. So like around a little bit like around 1900, I think. And okay. I think they came because uh, people were really starting to hate Jews. Oh. Okay. So they left. Yeah. Yeah, and then they were all that was left. Like the, that that group who left, um, I have no family left in Eastern Europe. They all got they all got offed. So it was only the ones who came to America who lasted. Or I know this is a depressing topic. Um, let's talk about the virus. That's more fun. Um, no, they they came to America and Canada. <laughs> Um, yes. You became a dance teacher and a choreographer. Yes. How and when did you start dancing? I started dancing. I used to want to do to do more theater. Like I wanted to be an actor. I think when I was in when I was young, when I was like in uh, fifth and sixth grade around there. Uh, 
And then I started dancing, I think around when I was 15 or 16, maybe 16. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Did you do something else before, like any uh, uh, but body discipline? No, I really I hated. Discipline, but I don't know, field or? Yeah, no, a discipline. I yeah. no, I was I was not very athletic. The only thing I enjoyed um, in any sport was tackling people. Okay. Uh, which I, I think, think it's like, like yeah, to yeah to like to jump on them and, and knock them on the ground. Okay. Um, so I feel like that relates a lot to dance. And then I know that when I was very little, uh, I would if my parents had friends over, I would. Um, I would do shows for them. I would put on a suit. And this is maybe when I was six or seven years old. I would put on a suit and, and I would go downstairs and I had a tape player and I would play, I think, a Bee Gees cassette tape, a Bee Gees album. And I would just fall on the ground and thrash and like just thrash around on the floor to a Bee Gees album. And if you see um, my shows now, it's not very different. What do like you it's do for a, dancing? What, what what sort of dance are you are you doing? Very similar to what I just described. <laughs> Someone does it have a name? What's name? What? I name? mean, people say contemporary or postmodern or dance theater okay. anywhere in okay. there. But my um my last show actually had I was in a suit thrashing around on the floor. So it's really the exact same thing I was doing when I was five or six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm also doing the same thing as when I was six. When I was six, I was writing stories. Uh huh. So you're I'm an author. Writer. Ah. Yeah, I'm a writer. Uh, what novelist. kind of? And what? A novelist. Um, I, a novelist. Yeah, I write novels and I also write essays because I'm a university teacher. Oh. Um, I teach semiotics of the image and discourse analysis, and I am in a media studies department. Where? In Lyon, in France. Oh, cool. I have, I've been to Lyon, I love it. Yeah? Yeah. When did you go to Lyon? My, my dance company was uh, in residence at uh, Les Subsistances a few times. Okay, I've been so there that, and I've seen shows there. They have yeah. uh, a good pro program now. So that's, that's, and that's how I know um, Cedric and then how I know David. That's how, that's the connection. Okay, yeah. the Lyon connection. Yeah, yeah, when I met Cedric and, and the team, it was, I was living in Paris and they had me go to uh, New York for a literary event called Walden Bridges. And that yeah. was, I think, in I, I, When were you there? Huh? When did, wh when did you do Walls and Bridges? I think it was in 2012. Yes, two, yeah, 12. Do you, what did you do? Um, I thought I was doing a reading, but they thought I was doing a burlesque show because I was doing burlesque at the time. Mm -hmm. So because it's a big literature festival, I thought, you know, I have like different hats. Like I was a yeah. burlesque dancer and a university teacher and a queer writer. And I thought, yeah. okay, which, which hat do I have to wear this time? Yeah. Um, and you know, Walls and Bridges, they have a big budget and you know, it's going to be all writers and uh, they have this show in Brooklyn and I'm like, okay, I have to read something yeah. like at, read the, at, the, at the Invisible Dog. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I thought I was, I was, I thought reading poetry was nice, you know, and then they asked me about my costumes, like in my lighting needs, my, my needs in terms of light and stage effects and like sound effects. And I was like, oh shit. I came to do a poetry reading, like really French way, like me, a black dress, the mic, mm -hmm. you know, and then I realized this is not exactly what's expected. So I came on stage, uh, I, I rolled the text like really uh, tiny, mm -hmm. and I put it in my vagina, and then mm -hmm. I came on stage and I took my clothes off slowly, and there was a heartbeat, heartbeat sound. I asked in the last minute, there was a musician there and he said, do you want me to do something? And I was like, I need some dramatic effects. So mm -hmm. he said, I have a heartbeat. And I said, okay, do, let's do that. And I stripped my clothes off and I like gave birth to my text. 
and I read it. Um, because I'm, this was my last minute thing. I had like no idea because I, I do performance art and like I use my body for performance art and, and I didn't have any like costumes or anything. Mm -hmm. So this is what I did. But then there was another uh, after effect. They were not expecting me to get naked. <laughs> Completely naked. So I think Walls and Bridges was um, an interesting experience for everyone. I think I think I might have been there that night. Okay. I think, yeah. Because I, I also was in Walls and Bridges a few times. And that year, did you do it? 2012? I don't remember the years, but I may have, but even if I wasn't in it, I was, I was, I would go. Um, so I may have been there that night. Um, and I'm also, I think this is one of the connections because I'm also, um, uh, I was a go-go dancer for years. Okay. So I'm also like a, a go-go dancer, burlesque type and a university professor. So this is, See? this is how it comes together. See, what I realized there is many, not, not many, but there is some of you in the US, in the US, I. Uh, in the queer community, I met people mm -hmm. who are university teachers and burlesque dancers or, yeah. you know, like sex workers or whatever. In yeah. France, it's uncommon. And, it's uncommon uh, here as well, but there's a little bit. Yeah. Remember, the, I think the last time I did Walls and Bridges, there was, we did an evening about um, thresholds. And, and it was, you could either give a, a, you could give a, you could give like a five minute, you had five minutes and they had a bunch of people and you could either do a, a lecture or a performance. And for mine, I had, um, I had a friend uh, slap me in the face nonstop for five minutes. Oh, wow. Intense. Yeah. Yeah. And the audience was yelling, stop. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which was pretty great. How did you come to the idea and what, what, what was the, um, the meaning of it for you? That performance? Well, it was about threshold. So I was curious to see like when, when would I need to stop or when would the, my friend who was slapping me need to stop or when would the audience need us to stop? So it was like, what was the actual threshold? Of... And who stopped? Well, the time ran out. We kept <laughs> going, but he, he hated it. My friend who was slapping me felt so terrible. He was really... He was really, it was hardest for him, I think. So it was him who needed aftercare. Well, I did too. I mean, my, my face was a mess, but <laughs> I had a bunch of, it was, I, I, I broke a lot of blood vessels and he hit my ear a few times. Oh my God. Hurt. But it was great. So it was, this, is, this was Walls and Bridges. Yeah. So we both did something at Walls and Bridges. That was yeah, I did. I think I performed. I did something at least three or four times there for Walls and Bridges. Yeah, I did that. We did a performance based on a film. I think a friend of mine and I were bouncers one night uh, to let people in. Yeah. Uh, and maybe one other thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. I loved, I loved being part of that. Yeah, I've been only once, but it was a, it was, Great. I mean, and like Cedric says, um, it's the the connections you make during festivals like that 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 stay with you. Yeah. And you know what happened when I moved to because when they invited me, I lived in uh, Paris. Mm -hmm. And years after, I moved to Lyon because I got the job at university in Lyon. And in the street, uh, I met a woman who worked for Walton for the for the uh, organization that. Uh, organized walls and bridges mm -hmm. and i ran into her in the street oh. uh, we hadn't seen each other in like five five years or uh, three years i don't know so it's interesting yeah and do so, you still do you still perform oh, wait, um we have... i yeah i i mean i don't do burlesque anymore but um i do performance uh art uh, around readings mm. i have um i have a collective like I, I publish novels, but I also yeah. do short, um, shorter texts for readings. And I have a collective, I'm part of a collective where six queer writers and we're called RERQ. So RER in Paris is what you call BART or uh, Subway 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's like yeah. the part of San Francisco. Yes. But it's in yes. Paris. So everywhere. And we have like uh, four lines, A, B, C, D, E. I mm -hmm. think we have E also. Um, but the line Q does not exist. Got it. So we called ourselves Everywhere Q um, because our first show was at a place called La Station. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was an old train station. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, so we do performance art around text. So now we have a first prompt group slash solo. Yes. Okay, I was just talking about my collective. Yeah, I so thought you okay. were, I thought you had seen it and were just making an invisible transition. I think Cedric put the word in my head and, yeah. and, and then it turned into my uh, RRQ narration. I was incredibly yeah, impressed. I thought you had just done a seamless, beautiful, perfect transition <laughs> that we wouldn't know. And I was like, please, go. wow, that was amazing. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, but maybe they can, when they do the edit of this conversation, they, they can make the part it, where I say, oh. They can really just cool. make it like you did this perfect transition. Yeah. How about you? Are you part of a collective or a company? I have a company. Uh, my company is called Witness Relocation. And we often do very large scale group ensemble pieces. But lately I've been focused on much smaller, um, mostly because of like, I don't know how to do it. So the challenge of it, the last piece we made was a duet that I was also in. Um, and I didn't know how to make a evening length duet or how to be a main performer in one of the pieces I was also directing and choreographing. So I thought this is what I should try to do because I don't know how to do it. Um, and now I'm working, my, the next piece I wanna work on is going to be a solo, I think, um, for me. So that's even harder. Like I have really no idea how to do it. Um, it's easier for me to work with a group and I prefer working with a group, but I like the challenge of of a small of like a duet or a solo now because I really it forces me to rethink how I do everything mm -hmm. and how I make everything because I have no idea how to do it. Um, so yeah, but I'm I mean I'm most I mean especially now with the how way things are. Lockdown, I mean like how yeah, you can you can't make a well you can I mean I I've I've worked on group I've. I worked on a group piece during this lockdown all online and it's okay. It, it, it's, it's a thing, but it's not, it's not the way I like to, you know, I, I really like bodies together and being in the room and making something for the ensemble for the group stuff. So I feel like we're forced now to make solos. Um, yeah, during yeah. lockdown, I was um, incapable of writing anything. Also, I just finished writing on a big no a big novel in 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 January. It's it took me two years, and it's it's uh, oh, wow. larger. It's 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 a bigger book than my previous novels. It's longer, so I was like drained, and I was I was like, okay, there is lockdown, but I have like no, you know, just gave birth to a big book, yeah. uh, to a long novel. So, but then so that was like two months of like doing only things with my hands mm -hmm. like polishing furniture building stuff yeah yeah and uh, then my my collective RERQ, uh, my writers collective the six of us we gathered on zoom uh, mm -hmm. to chat and see how we're doing mm -hmm. and then like every time we meet we started a project <laughs> a new so, project yeah every time we meet we we like click and we have an idea so we decided the six of us to each write a short text about uh, lockdown and libido. Uh huh. Because we all noticed that creating and writing during lockdown was really hard. Like, the, like our creative libido was shut down. Yeah. And so we wrote, we wrote about that, and we are putting them online now these days. So, but it's in and, French. And did you feel? Did you feel Except like one, uh, one text? Uh, we have one American writer cl called Claire Finch. So maybe maybe I can oh. send you her. Hang Sorry, on, friend, I... my friend over here. Ah, here we go. This our 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 next prompt from from Cedric said pussies. So I'm bringing this this one in. Yeah. Sometimes did you feel? Classic. Did you feel um, in the lockdown when it started? Did you feel like this? 
like responsibility to be creative. Like, oh, I have to keep making things. I have to, I have to make work. Because I felt this big pressure that I was like, oh my God, I have to do something. I have to, sh I have to keep being creative. And it was really hard. And yeah, there was a pressure to make something out of it as yeah. uh, creative people. And I was just trying to survive em emotionally and yeah. um, taking care of the people I was locked in with. <laughs> uh, and taking care of I mean the first month I was just going nuts are you no longer you're no longer locked down right you're no, allowed out no since Monday it's been three days we are four days and what's but it people like people are like running people are like everybody's wearing a mask yeah and when you cross the main train station in Lyon which happens often because it's like in Lyon, there is this train station called Lyon Pardieu. Mm -hmm. And if you want to switch uh, uh, tram lines, you have to yeah. cross the train station, even if you don't take a train. Yeah. And it was like a science, science fiction movie because there was suddenly tons of people wearing masks and walking with one meter distance from each other. Mm -hmm. So it really felt like a sci-fi movie uh, after post-apocalyptic something, you know? Right, so you're not locked down, but everybody still does the uh, social distance. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and are people good? Are people wearing, is everybody wearing the mask and doing it? Yeah. Yeah, here, not so much. Here, so, a lot of people are, but a lot of people are just like, uh, they think the mask is like a, a liberal conspiracy or something. Yeah, well, I do in public transportation because if you don't, then the cops are coming to you and like, no, I had, I didn't, yesterday a cop asked me to put my mask on. So you don't really have a choice here. I think this is good. Like, I think people should be wearing them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, we have you a- You guys are doing great if you want. Photo, there's a cool photo. Oh. What is it? You have to click it. Oh, oh no. Oh my God, are you looking at it? Yeah. Is this, okay. is this what's happening now? I guess so. My kids went to school today. Oh, you have uh, kids? Yeah, I have three kids. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And they all went to school. Were you free well, freaked two out? Of them, two of them went to school today. Um, we'll see how they felt about it. How is it, is it reduced class size? Is there anything? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the teachers are wearing masks and they have to, like in the picture we just got from Cedric. They, yeah. I don't know if they actually did that, that in the courtyard. I'll find out when I talk to my kids. But I don't have them um, all week long. We, we have, um, have them three days and then we switch. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. find out when I see them tomorrow. Right. Right, right, right. I, we've been discussing how to teach in the fall, if we'll be online or not. And, and for what I teach, um, like if I'm teaching yoga or dance or something, the idea of everybody doing it in the face masks and with the distance, it just seems like it would be better to just only be online than to try and be in the room, trying to breathe with the mask on. I don't know, it's... Yeah, the mask is something that makes me feel uh, anxious and I couldn't wear it and do yoga. You, yeah. you teach yoga, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I've been, uh, I've been doing a lot of yoga to... Oh yeah? <laughs> to stay mentally sane. Yeah. Uh, the last two months. Um, I like cardio better usually, but I, <laughs> I, I think yoga saved my, my mental health. Well, months. I'll send you, I, I can send you one of my, some of my yoga sets get, uh, also I mix in a lot of like, oh, please. a lot of like core and Pilates type stuff. Okay, cool. So it'll, it gives you a, it gets your heart going also. Okay, yeah. love it. I have like, I'm, I'm such a fan of um, this American yoga teacher called Sadie Nardini. Um, Sadie Nardini, I don't know if you know her. She's, she puts uh, yoga classes online and it, it has some cardio in it. It's like, I really mm -hmm. like it. 
and she's yeah. a 40, she's 45 badass like mohawk um what's her name Sadie Nardine you put it and, we put it in the chat yeah I love her she's really inspired I mean I like her her looks she's um she's quite punk in her in her uh appearance um, yeah and I like the mix of like punk and yoga, punk style and yoga philosophy together. Yeah, well, that's close to, I mean, the place that's sort of, that's reminds me of how I do it. And the place that I did my training is all like, like the, uh, most of the teeth, like the woman who founded the yoga studio I go to, she's covered in tattoos and used to run a nightclub and there's a disco ball on the floor. The floor is like, done with glitter in it and they'll like blast a prince album while you're while you're practicing so it's very similar to that that vibe i think i guess it's very far away from from the way you're supposed to do yoga in the first place but i feel like yoga you know i have a question since you're a yoga teacher yeah um i wonder like i've been asking this question to another yoga teacher i wonder why yoga took over the world she said uh, it's because people realize it, it does good to them. It's good for mm -hmm. them. But I, there must be other explanations, like economic, like there is an industry behind it. Yeah. And it actually does good to soul and body because it, it really saved my mental health the last two months. But oh, what yeah. is your explanation for like yoga becoming like a worldwide uh, thing? I, I mean... I don't know. I have, I have, it's, it's a thing that I've thought about and I have questions about it. Uh, part of me, I mean, uh, part of me thinks it's because um, like Western culture is so spiritually starved that we're just looking for some way to connect to something bigger than ourselves. And a lot of the Western religions don't do that for people. And we're really just desperately looking for some, some sense of like a bigger picture and a way to understand and belong and to uh, like do good for ourselves. And I know a lot of the Western yoga practice doesn't, doesn't like is divorced from the spirituality um, or it's a very like, uh, like it's like a weird brand of, it feels like a very fake brand or not fake is the wrong word. I'm, I'm, I'm being very judgmental. It, um, it all feels very much like the spirituality you would like find at a, at like a big summer music festival. You know, it doesn't like it lacks a cer certain authenticity or it, um, but I feel like there is a, a, a desire to connect to something bigger and also a desire to take care of our bodies that I think is really lacking um, culturally in a, in a, but then when I say that, I know that like we're, we're also gym obsessed and body obsessed. So I think it feels a lack, it feels a need, but I'm not sure exactly what need. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is something about um, that there is different styles of yoga. Um, but the style of yoga I've been practicing uh, alone for the last two months uh, I read about it and it says that it's a type of yoga where you don't have a lot of theoretical spiritual stuff around it because the mm -hmm. idea is that you have to do it and do it and do it and while doing it uh, it will um, bring something to you it will, it will make you feel yeah. good yeah but it's not only because you gain uh, because you're you're strengthening your core and everything but it opens you up and I feel there is I, you're a dancer I'm not but um, I've been doing performance art for the last 10 years and or 15 years and I think there is something in yoga about the moves like really when you when you uh, do a torsion or you open the chest mm -hmm. and you breathe like in, in this position it actually yeah. does open something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember I had a friend who was just talking about how his life is really hard right now. And he was just trying to catch his breath. And I sent him a, um, 
a yoga set that was literally about like catching your breath and a breathing meditation. It's like, yeah, sometimes you can actually physicalize the thing you're trying to do. I remember when I was teaching once, there were certain, there's some poses that are positions that are really hard for people and different for everybody. And sometimes it's about like releasing a muscle. And I remember saying like, oh, in order to like, to get past it, you have to, you have to learn to let go of something. And like, that's about a muscle, but that's also just in life, that's just true. You know, so like the very physical act of doing these things teaches yeah. you the metaphor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Cedric is saying uh, queens and kings. Queens. So why do you think, but wait, why do you think they put us together in the blind date? Is it because we're tattooed? Because I saw you have a tattoo. And I, I saw like, you, I was going to ask you about them. Hang on, my cat's knocking something over. Hang on. Get down. Okay. Get down. Yeah, be good. Um, well, I think so far the similarities are we're both university professors who have tattoos. Okay. We're both performers in like go-go dance, nightclub, burlesque fields. We've both done that. Um, we both have been doing yoga to keep sane. So I attribute like when I, the place that when I began going heavily, like that's, I think without my yoga studio, like I wouldn't have been able to quit drinking, a lot of stuff. Like a lot of, a lot of things have really, it's really helped me do a lot. Well, yoga has helped me quit smoking, so. Yeah, yeah. Just because you're like, oh, I, I'll be better at this if I can breathe better. So you begin to like redefine yourself. And I thought that's, it really burns a lot of crap away. Um, but yeah, let's see, how many tattoos do you have? Um, so this is my first one. I was like 20 something and it says romance. Mm -hmm. It's been done in San Francisco. Uh, he, this is the second one. Um, it's like roses. Mm -hmm. I have a big one on my back. It's, um, it's like an it's always, it's all flowers and like they all have a, a symbol like I, I picked the flowers because of their symbol here mm -hmm. i have the first and last letter of the alphabet a and z but you can't read oh, yeah. it they're like reverse and oh this, yeah, yeah yeah this is a feather to write with oh great so you know like old old style you write and i i wanted to have a poem i might put the poem here that comes out of the Oh, cool. I had this one done. It's my last one. I had this one done uh, two and yeah, a little bit over two years ago. Over because I thought I'm a writer and this is a constant thing in my life. Like writing mm -hmm. has been with me since I am able to write. My grandma, who was a teacher, uh, said I would be a writer. And my mom writes too. And oh, writing, wow. writing has kept me saying, sane throughout my life it's like mm -hmm. it's it's something i do um, i mean i'm glad that i have a job that yeah. is that is linked to writing but that my writing is something personal that i do in my own rhythm uh mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, glad I'm not a journalist for instance you know what i mean yeah i'm, glad yeah. I'm a teacher and that writing is like really like because writing for me is like a religion it's something that I do every day to keep sane. It's something that helps me, that does connect me to others. Like I just met in Lyon, this amazing writer called Elise Bonnard and I love her writing. And we started writing a novel together. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so do you write every day? I write every day uh, in my journal. Uh, this is like, because my brain goes too fast, uh, it's like a hamster in, a, in its wheel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I writing takes up some of the steam, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I write like I do yoga, you know, like to, to yeah. take some of the, the steam off. Yeah, no, for me, this is what like dancing and yoga are the same. It, like it, it release, it's the release valve. Yeah, if I don't do something every day, I begin to get really depressed. Yeah. Do you have a set time? Do you like always in the morning or always at night or just whenever? Well, I have a ritual called the morning pages. Um, that, mm -hmm. was, that was passed, that was given to me by my ex. 
I used I, I was in a relationship for five years when I was twenty seven until thirty one or two, I don't remember. Um and the person was a writer, is a writer from San Francisco called Lynn Breedlove Lynn Breedlove. And mm-hmm. Lynn uh Lynn made me believe in me as a writer and it's thanks to Lynn that I actually published my first book because I've been writing since I was a kid. Oh wow. And my grandma used to send my writings to publishers, but you know, kids' writings. Mm-hmm. Um, and Lenny, uh, Lenny gave me the, the, you know, the inner strength to believe that I could publish. Mm-hmm. Um, he also gave me this book called *The Artist's Way* by Julia yeah. Cameron. Yeah. And first, you know, I'm I'm a French person. I'm I'm half French, half German, and I was like, you know, American self-help books, really. Uh, but then. I did it because I'm I'm a good student. So when yeah. I start something, I do it, you know, the way it's supposed to be done. And actually, I wrote my first book that was published thanks to this method. Oh wow! Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, wow. and I like the exercises, like you know, she says, write a letter to you when you're 99 years old, or write a letter to you when you were nine. Um, I like that. It's she, yeah. I like that book. So Lenny told me to do the morning pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I do them in the evening, but the idea is to write three pages every day in your journal. Yeah. And that, that really keeps me sane. Wow. Well, I like the, the, the fact that it's, um, that you give yourself a task also. Like it's, I find it, it's really hard to, um, to be creative but it's easier to like do a task, do it like solve a problem, just do a, you know, like as opposed to going, I have to come up with something really good to go, I have to write three pages or I'm going to write a letter to me when I'm 99. Like that having the directive, I feel like un- unlocks the, uh, the creativity in a, in a real way. Yeah. As opposed to going, I have to make something good or I have to be creative, which to me is like the hardest thing in the world. You asked me about my tattoo, so may I ask you about yours on your hand? Yes, which ones? I have, I have, I think I have around fifty tattoos now. Okay. So I don't, yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> okay, pick yeah. with your favorite ones. Um, these ones that say Let's "Let see. Go." Can you see? Yes. Yeah, that I I got those. I was in yoga class. And I was practicing um, handstands. And I was always looking down, like, I was always looking down at my hands in the handstand. And I just, and I, and I knew that what I had to do was let go of my desire to get a good handstand. Okay. In order to get a good handstand. Like, I feel like that with inversions, with going upside down. And again, it's like, whenever you talk about it, it's all a metaphor for the rest of your life. But like you have to you have to think about it in terms of this is not a handstand practice this is a falling down on the ground a lot practice and sometimes i'll fall down less so like you have to let go of the desire for the outcome and i was just st- i was staring at my hands in class and i was holding a handstand like i was if i practice a lot i could like get up there and i can hold a handstand for a minute and i'm it's great and it, it's but i have to do it every day um and I was there staring at my hands and thinking about this. And then I finished class and like took a shower and went to the tattoo studio and had them put the let go on my fingers. I love the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, um, that's that one. And then this, the lightning bolt here was, was after, uh, was after Bowie died. I got the lightning bolt. Um, this is one of my favorites also on this finger it says the word class so I can it's hard to see maybe yeah class C-L-A-S yeah so that I can I think it's so disgusting it's so I can I can do things with a touch of class yeah but yeah there's a I can show there's I won't I won't strip which will Cedric will be shocked that I'm not stripping. Um, <laughs> Is it something you do often? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, I'm sort of, it's, it's very, people are very familiar with me taking my clothes off. Um, yeah, it, me too. I think, I think we have yeah. this in common. There was Here's a my joke cat. with my friend on that. 
What Here's, is yeah, it's, it's my cat, Dr. Smith, who died. And it says, Dr. Smith, uh, such a good little guy. So this is one of my favorites also. And this tattoo artist, this, this is uh, this tattoo artist named Virginia, um, Virginia Elwood, who's amazing, who Cedric has, a, has work from also. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I have so many. This one's good. Days without an accident. Yeah, they, you see that on the, they put those outside construction sites and you can fill in the box of how many days they've gone without an accident. Okay. So I thought it would be good for it to have on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, the next prompt is prompt is play. Play. Hmm. hmm. Do people do you, have you been playing much? In this <laughs> lock. I have like three kids who are between five and eight. Oh wow. Old. And they asked me to play with them. And <laughs> I, I, it made me feel bad because all I wanted to do was uh, something else. It's mm -hmm. hard for me to play with the kids because like I said, my brain goes too fast. Um, yeah. It never stops. And it's really hard. Like playing is about to let go. And they have this ability, yeah. uh, the small humans, to... Uh, just be in the moment. And yeah. I have lots of ability, except when I'm writing. So yeah, playing would be amazing if I could, uh, because like I started playing with a kid and then after two minutes, I'm like getting up because I forgot to send a message to that collaborator or I have yeah. to do something in you the house. You have a thing to do. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, I think we adults are, have a hard time playing because our brain is not wired to be in the moment mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah yeah but that's also i think like hey guys stop the cats are arguing um i think that's also what uh two okay. i can show you here's this is uh twig the wonder kid he's the siamese one he's a beauty he's very beautiful and then the other one is named Lux Interior. I'll get him. Luxie, why are you hissing? Come here. Come here, buddy. Oh, oh he's in a bad mood. OK. Here's this guy. He's also very, very sweet. What's wrong? You OK? He's in a mood. But you know, I, we were saying, I think, um, like the, the cats and dogs of the world have been very happy about this lockdown because they get all the attention all the time now. My cat hated it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, my cat is like gorgeous, but that's all she has. <laughs> <laughs> She's got beautiful green eyes and like she has this long, she was found in the street. So she's no, mm -hmm. you know, she's no, um, a com competition cat but right 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 she's, she's like three colors long hair green eyes but she doesn't like people and she thinks we live uh -huh. in her house mm -hmm. so when we are home she's like yeah we live at her place yeah but i think i think most cats feel that way <laughs> yeah 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 you know, I actually have to go to the bathroom. Can okay. we hold for one second? Give me one yeah, second. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the break. same. Yeah, great. We'll take a bathroom break. Yeah, I'll, oh, I'll put on, I have this dancing, I have this me dancing background I'll put on. Hang on. Yeah.
Oh. Okay, I'm back. Oh, the last prompt. You know, I was thinking about something um, in the bathroom. Yeah, which is the best place to think. Yeah. Uh, so they put us on a blind date. Um, yeah. And we're both like being recorded. Yeah. And then they will put this on the social media. Yeah. And all we've done is like talking trying to find out who we are and we haven't said anything like intellectual important that could be oh. um, uh, useful for society <laughs> or like I'm suddenly like I'm really enjoying meeting you and I think this blind date is perfect and interesting yeah. for me yeah. but I'm not sure that people will find it interesting because we're like focused on each other so I hope I hope it makes sense for other people than just you and me we'll see yeah, but let maybe they'll um, maybe it will inspire them. <laughs> I have no idea how. I just thought I would say that. Get just, get a cat tattoo or. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, we I have think a prompt that... word. Wait, let's let's do something oh, yeah. intellectual and like profound around yeah. the word king. king. Okay. Well, it's very important to. Um, Explore. There. <laughs> <laughs> what are your kinks? What are your kinks? Since oh my God. I have to remember that this is going out on the internet. <laughs> um, what are my kinks? I often wonder, like, I wonder, I think that, like, I think everybody's probably, I, no, I don't know. I have no idea how to what other people do. I think that a lot of people think that they're really wild, and then what they do is like to other people is not really wild. If someone's like, like, oh, I like, I really like having sex in the shower, and they think that makes them like this crazy, dirty, wild person. It's like that's fine. Like I, like I, I wonder what is. Like, what are the surprising kinks? Like, what are the things that you're like, oh, wow, that's that's pretty wild. Because I feel like we hear about so much these days, like very little is shocking. And like, what would a kink be that is actually shocking to hear someone did? Whether it's you or someone else, you would just be like, wow, that's that's new. But wait, kink in, in English, it means bent, right? Oh, no, it just, yes, but it just, it means, oh, okay, that's interesting. Kink to me means like, like sort of like sexual proclivities. Yeah, a fetish, a fetish. Yeah, fetish, but, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. But at the, at the beginning, it's like queer. Queer means um, not straight, right? Right, right. And so kink means a bit. intersex and trans people say yeah. that. Yeah. We're called queers and then reclaimed it. It's the yeah. same for kink, but I, I realized that I don't know uh, the word kink what does it mean in English? It you means like that? a fetish, but also, but if we just take it, it just means like, what is a slight, a slight bend? Okay, it's like queer, it's like, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like, ev like everybody can have a kink. Um, yeah, and we can have kinks that are not sexual because yeah. like, I feel like a kink is something that makes you like, like enjoy. It's, it's like a yeah. little joy that is like, really yours yeah and like, yeah so i'm like it's your thing it's like it's like your sweet spot you know like yeah. so my kink uh you can have kinks in food or mm -hmm. like in social interactions um i get bored a lot uh, I'm deaf in one ear, so parties are really a problem for me because I don't mm -hmm. hear anything, and I I'm like small talking is is complicated for me. So yeah. I have a kink about uh, conversation, like when I meet someone and like really it clicks. Mm -hmm. um, like I was talking about this writer I met in Lyon, and like I'm like yay! So you know. Right, that like special connection is a kink. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With other writers, I like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Like meeting words. someone. I have a kink with words. I have a kink with words. Like 
I can spend hours editing a text and when I read the text from a writer friend and I can see that it's uh, beautifully uh, constructed, I have a kink with constructions of text. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. when you start a story and then at the end of the story, it makes a loop and then you realize mm -hmm. it's beautifully uh, uh, wo woven? Wave, woven? Yeah, yeah, woven. Yeah. Woven. yeah. Uh, and the canvas is like precise. I hate beautiful writing with lots of, you know, like, but I like precise um, yeah. constructed stories that might be written in like common language, you know, um, like or, uh, with no special effects in the mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at mm -hmm. the end of the story, like, you're like, whoa, like, that, yeah. that is a kink for me. It, it makes my brain go, boom. Yeah, yeah. I think mine, if, if we have to talk about a thing like that, and then we have to move on to recommendations, I see. But uh, uh, I think mine is like, I like when people uh, dance in places where they're, where you're not supposed to dance. Oh, do you do that? I love seeing, I love seeing someone like dancing in a bar or dancing on the street corner or dancing on the, at the train station. And that to me is the most thrilling thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, there is like one, one story about Kiyong. Um, there is a famous uh, dance crew called Pokemon Crew uh, mm -hmm. that started dancing in front of the um, city hall mm -hmm. uh, years ago. And today, like years later, you can still find kids dancing, like teenagers and, oh, wow. and adults dancing in front of the city hall. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not the city hall, it's the opera the opera but it's oh, okay, yeah. the city hall like the opera is behind the city hall so yeah 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 okay recommendations okay, recommendations well um, you've already okay. given me this yoga woman who i'm gonna look up okay sadie nardini i'm gonna look her up yeah it's and a yoga I'm, teacher with a mohawk and i love her yeah yeah and i'm gonna send you one of my one of my uh yoga sets because i've been recording them and Please. putting them online and yeah. when we when we hang on when we hang hang on yeah uh, hang on. I will do because I want to do a yoga uh, um, moment right oh, I'll now. Send it. I'm gonna send I'll it. I'll do yours. Now. I'll do yours right now. So when right. you hang I'm gonna, on, you know I'm gonna put it in the chat right now. Okay. So I'll copy paste it. Yeah. Um. There we go. And then if you really liked, and then how about a, how about a, um, could you recommend me something to read and I'll recommend you a, a dance performance that you can watch online. Okay. Um, yeah. I recommend you, okay. I have French writers I love, but I don't think you read French, so. Uh, barely. Okay, Not so enough. I will recommend yeah. you two um, American writers who I love and actually uh, know who are French. Mm -hmm. um, so one is my ex called uh, Lynn Breedlove. So I write it in yeah Lynn, in the chat. Yeah. Lynn Breedlove, and mm -hmm. Lynn's first novel is called Godspeed, uh, and it's the story of a queer bike messenger in San Francisco in the nineties. Okay. Um, Oh and shit! It's, it's a great novel. Got it. Okay, hang on. The the exterminators here. Yeah. Okay, I need to the exterminators here, so I need to run. But let me recommend um, a dance that you can watch online. Um, will you tell them I'll be one second? I'm finishing up a meeting. Um, It's a really good thing. I, I, this was my idea. Now I can't think of anything. Um, it's okay. Let me tell you about the second writer. She's called Michelle yeah. T. Michelle T. And her first book that I read is called Valencia, and it's amazing. And it's also okay. San Francisco queer scene in the 90s. Voilà. I will look those up. And then, um, Oh my God, why am I blanking? You know, I'm gonna tell you to watch, it's, a, it's not so much a dance, but it's one of my favorite videos. And it's, um, it's a short film. Uh, 
called um, Sissy Boy Slap Party by Guy Madden. Okay. And I'm going to put the link in for you. Hang on. Yeah. I'm going to put the link in. Boom. And now I have to run because the exterminator is here. I love that our blind date was stopped by an exterminator. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. I'm going to do, do your yoga right now. Amazing. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.